Next up, we have a panel discussion on how networks can drive more capital towards impact in India. To get this started, I'm delighted to invite uh, Naina Batra. Naina is chairperson and CEO of Asian Venture Philanthropy Network. Prior to joining AVPN, uh, Naina was a senior leader at the Monitor Group. She was also a partner and co-founder of Group 50. In 2019, Naina was awarded one of Asia's top sustainability superwomen. Naina, wonderful to have you and over to you for the next 30 minutes. Thank you, Santosh. Um, namaste and good morning from Singapore. Um, I'm delighted to be here and thank you very much to the Nudge Forum for inviting us. According to a report released by the Indian Impact Investors Council um, earlier on this year, impact enterprises in India have collectively raised $10.8 billion over the last decade. This has been invested into more than 550 for-profit social enterprises that in turn have impacted more than 490 million beneficiaries who are mostly low-income communities that are underserved by traditional businesses as well as through public sector social service delivery. While we may argue that this is a relatively small amount of capital, these impact investments have had an outsized effect on India's socio-economic development because of the direct targeting of underserved customers and the high level of business and technology innovation that has been seeded and scaled by impact investors to address the most important development challenges that are facing our nation. As impact investing is comparatively nascent in India, I do believe, and this is not coming from any place of bias, that networks have played a big role in promoting awareness and building a community of impact. As, as Santosh mentioned, I'm Nena Sabarwal Batra. I am the CEO of AVPN, which is the Asian Venture Philanthropy Network, Asia's largest social investing network that brings together foundations, corporates, impact investors, VCs and family offices from more than 36 countries to deploy capital towards impact across Asia. I have great pleasure in welcoming to this fireside chat along with me, my close friend, Amit Bori, the CEO of the Global Impact Investing Network or the GIN from New York, and Sudhir Sethi, the chairman of Chirate Ventures, one of the largest VC firms in India. Amit and Sudhir, welcome to this discussion. Um, it's, it's, it's very interesting and actually very relevant to have both of you because you represent um, both network and investor. And I think um, you're gonna help us over the next 30 minutes to understand the growth of this sector in India and why it is so important as India needs to go towards achieving the social, the sustainable development goals. So first, Amit, a few words about yourself and about the gin. Yeah, sure. No, thank you. And um, I'm such, um, it's such an honor to be here with all of you. And it's, it's late in the evening here in New York. And I know many of you are dallying in very early in the morning. Uh, and thank you for joining us. Um, I'm incredibly I'm grateful for this opportunity. I think it's such an important um, discussion to be having, of course, on such a special holiday and happy Independence Day to everyone. Um, so I am um, you know, was born in the United States um, and um, have been working to help um, you know, develop the impact investing market for uh, about 12 years now. The GIN was founded in 2009 um, with a mandate to help um, really be a global champion of impact investing all around the world. And one of the things that we do, of course, is we are a network of investors, as our name would suggest. Um, and we include um, over 300 uh, formal members um, based in about 50 countries around the world. Um, and over 30,000 um, or, or, um, people who are part of our network globally. Um, now, those organizations are huge financial institutions, um, you know, some of the world's largest global institutions, all the way down to boutique firms, in places like India, Bangladesh, Kenya, um, the United States, the Netherlands, and so on. Um, but what unites all of our members uh, is the conviction that they can use investment capital to have a positive impact on people in the planet. Um, and they focus on a broad range of, of sectors, so things like financial inclusion, sustainable agriculture, clean energy access, uh, increasing access to healthcare for low-income populations. Um, and um, we do a lot of work at the gym uh, to help drive research on what's happening in the market and also to help provide tools and resources for how you can measure and manage your impact. Thanks, Amit. Um, and over to you, Sudhir. Just a few words about yourself and about Chirate as well. 
thank you, Naina and uh, Amit uh, for having me here. Uh, and again, happy Independence Day to you and the audiences. Um, we are a venture fund. We believe uh, uh, impact and financial investing uh, in the outsized returns manner are two sides of the coin. We manage about $800 million worth of uh, capital. Uh, we invested in uh, 97, uh, com 87 companies so far, exited 40, um, and more when we talk. Thanks, Sudhir. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to start with a question for Amit. You know, we are here, uh, you and I, both of us represent networks. And I think uh, you know, networks do a lot which is uh, sometimes not understood in terms of you know, just bringing people together in terms of advocacy, in terms of learning. So what role do you see um, a global network like Jin playing in expanding the capital that is targeted towards impact here in South Asia? Yeah, well, I, I think it's, um, you know, there, we were very intentional about setting up a network when we were founded. And it was based on a premise that if we were trying to change the way that people thought of investment um, and trying to increase the amount of capital that was focused on having an impact while achieving a financial return, um, we needed to teach many investors um, to, a new way of doing their jobs um, and support many institutions who are very pioneering and trying to innovate on models of investing all around the world. Um, to help have a, gl a global support in a community um, so they can help accelerate their own learning. A big premise for us is collective learning, um, that there are people, you know, of course, in, in India, um, in, in the Netherlands, in Brazil, and the United States, um, you know, in um, Southeast Asia, who are all trying to advance um, different models of scaling businesses that have a positive impact and are financially sustainable and viable. Um, and so we don't want the wheel to be reinvented all over the world at the same time. Um, we want to help make sure that um, people are making um, new mistakes, not repeating old ones, and are really able to take advantage of the best thinking and best innovation in the world. Um, so we very much think if you can visualize a network of nodes of activity, uh, nodes of light all around the world, making sure that they're connected and across those networks that information, capital, and ideas flow um, as fast as possible. Um, and as you started um, you know, with the focus on the sustainable development goals, if we are to achieve those important goals, um, we need to move a lot more capital much faster and have make sure it's incredibly effective, effective at achieving an impact. Um, so I see networks as essential to accelerating our progress. Oh, absolutely. And I, you, know, you made a couple of really important points here you know, in terms of highlighting to investors that there is a new way of investing, that they need to look at embracing a new way of investing, that there are different models of scaling. And, you know, I, I, I love the, the um, you know, allegory of, of the nodes of positive impact all over the world that we can all, that we can all um, tap into. I'm gonna bring Sudhir into the discussion as well right now. You know, Sudhir, you and I talked about it and uh, we've talked about you as a mainstream investor you have, you have looked at investment in a different way. So, you know, sort of building on Amit's point, do you, do you feel that you've had to look at a new way of investing as you have uh, kind of, you know, looked at measuring the impact that your investments have created? How would you sort of uh, describe um, in terms of uh, impact investing or investing that Chirate has done? Um, you know, how would you describe the impact that it has created? So... <clears throat> I think first and foremost, I really believe that, uh, and I, I must say that the impact side of this was not there for the first five years of our life or six years of our life. We were investing for outsized returns. And that was in consumer, in software, in fintech. And then we realized that, look, if you really look at it, each of those companies are solving a real problem. And our investment thesis became backing obviously great entrepreneurs who are solving problems in India, which have not been solved before. I think that's a very fundamental issue. And we are still a financial investor. And those problems we believe can only be solved by using technology. I think this is the key theme to us, whether it is in supply chain, whether it is in distribution chains, whether it is addressing uh, crop productivity, whether it is addressing you know, uh, e-commerce. I mean, e-commerce, when we invested in Mintra was fashion, but then we discovered that it's about delivering the right product at the right price with the right quality, with the right predictable delivery time. And that to me is impact because that was not available 
uh, you can define from a narrow point of view that, that that is not impact. Having a product delivered at the right time with high quality at the right price with predictability is to me a service which a consumer wants. Now, if you look at the way we are looking at uh, impact, uh, we, are, we started measuring impact. That had an enormously catalytic effect on us and our LPs. And our, it was a motivational issue. Today, um, AgroStar started as um, an e-commerce for agriculture. But today they are delivering crop productivity solutions to farmers. Okay, the market, tens of billions of dollars in India, uh, and incidentally, it's all using technology. Uh, if you look at a company like uh, Lenscart, now I'm I'm taking commercial examples to give you the impact. Um, they pre-COVID, and you know they're almost there back now again. They were delivering fifteen thousand eyeglasses per day and the bulk of them was for eye correction vision correction right which basically is driving the technological output and they are now taking it global if you look at first cry as an example started out as e-commerce but now moving rapidly into how to deliver baby care to three lakh mothers per month that's what they address so effectively, I think it's having a change on the strategy of companies by looking at the way, if you look at e-commerce, that's fine. But if you look at having, deliver, having access to babies, which are three lakh deliveries a month, your mind changes and that's a new business opportunity which comes up uh, overall. Uh, if you look at Aether as an example, Aether is delivering uh, intelligent, artificial intelligence based robotics-based prosthetics at a price point which no other company in the world can deliver. And that we are seeing as a big market. So I think the way we are looking at it, and I can take these examples you know, uh, as many as you want, there are two sides of the coin. I think the big difference is that we used to address as a, as a financial investor, the top 100 million consumers, if I take consumer as a market, for financial inclusion, I won't say financial inclusion, I'm, I'm cautious of using those words, financial impact, okay, to deliver debt uh, to SMEs, uh, let's say to the top 100 million consumers, to the top, uh, you know, a few million SMEs and so on and so forth. Now, our strategy is that those same companies or new companies can scale massively by going to the next 400 million consumers. The difference I see from an impact viewpoint, a traditional impact viewpoint is traditional impact must start at the bottom of the pyramid. We start at the top and the meeting point is coming in now. Okay. And that is a very, very important. I think impact is just the other side of the coin of companies, entrepreneurial companies using technology to solve a real problem. And that's what we're doing. There is no compromise on financial returns. Said a lot of very very interesting things and a few provocative things as well in in your statement. So I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to raise a few of these. Um, you started out by talking about you know you you started measuring impact and that had a big um, big sort of um, impact if I want to call it that on on your LP. Um, I, I want to know a little bit more about how you started measuring impact. You also then talked about the fact that, you know, initially for the first few years, the focus was on financial returns and then kind of, you know, sort of almost uh, sort of retrospectively, you went to see the impact that was created. And the third thing, which I think is, is huge, is that a lot of the entrepreneurs or the businesses that you invested in actually saw scale by, by you know, expanding their product or expanding their market to include underserved communities or communities uh, that they hadn't thought of earlier. And finally, I thought what was very interesting is, you know, you said you started from the top end of the market and you kind of moved towards uh, the, the middle. And, you know, you have people who invest traditionally uh, in social enterprises and they were kind of moving towards the middle of the market as well. And, and that's where the two met and there is no, uh, there's no discounted returns. You are, you're both creating impact, but in your mind, very, very clearly, there are no discounted returns. 
I think all of this is music to Amit's ears as well. Uh, you know, impact and no discounted financial returns. So I'm going to bring both of you into this conversation. Let's start with the impact measurement first, because there are a bunch of questions that have also come in around impact measurement. So Sudhir, first from you, um, what have you been using for, for impact measurement? And then to Amit, because I'm, I'm very impressed with, you know, Iris Plus, what Jin has launched and what Jin has uh, rolled out. I'd love then Amit to bring Iris Plus into the discussion as well. So uh, uh, Sudhir, first to you. What, what have you been doing to sort of measure impact and how do you communicate that to your LPs? So I think first, first phase for us, um, we actually had uh, an experienced uh, person. Uh, her name is Vidya. She joined us uh, about uh, eight months back. Before that, we actually were talking to DFIs. We were talking to some Indian investors and that's very important. You know, we raise capital from India and outside India. Okay, 50% of our capital comes from India. And Indian investors started asking us that, uh, are you solving any real problems? And as, as a result of which we said, okay, yes, we are. And DFI said, are you creating employment? We started measuring employment. Okay, and we suddenly found that um, at the end of the day, uh, there were 50,000 uh, jobs which were created. And this was quite some time back by the companies which were there and tertiary job or, or connected jobs was the ratio of one is to three. And that was being asked by DFIs. That was being asked by SIDBI, one of our uh, uh, investors in India, which is like a sovereign fund of fund. And they said, okay, if you're doing that, then can you prove it to us? Okay, we went out back to our companies and said, count, count, count. Um, we, uh, we went and said, uh, okay, let's count, uh, you, know, you know, the, the, the uh, uh, productivity increase for farmers, right? Because that was a big issue as far as farmers were concerned. We started going back to truck drivers of Blowhorn and saying, is there an increase in your income? Now, this is not something which is non-financial returns because this is the financial outcome of a good company delivering its product and services in a proper way. So when we started doing that, a couple of things happened. One, and this is important for a VC, we got more capital. We raised you know, in the last uh, couple of years, about $100 million worth of additional capital. Now that obviously is very motivating. And we also realized that I think if, if traditional impact investors, which is what we are doing right now, are coming from the bottom end, you know, and staying at the bottom and coming a little bit to the middle, uh, they may actually miss out on the 400, 500 million people. It's a missed opportunity if that horizon does not expand. We went back to our entrepreneurs and said, can we start measuring it? Can we do this quarterly? We have an MIS which comes monthly and quarterly, which is financial return. We added this as part of our standard MIS, which comes to us. And it had enormous effect because LP started receiving that. LP started talking to us on that. LP started helping us in that. We st we, our team got phenomenally motivated because we were coming to office every day in the morning saying money, 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 and say, oh, okay, there is crop productivity. There is, uh, you know, uh, mothers being tackled. There is uh, so our health tech strategy emerged very nicely. Do realize there are a billion people in India, out of which only 50 million people have health cover. How do you get health to a billion people? We started thinking differently. How you cannot have enough resources. I mean, to to build a baby care center, it take it takes 25 crore rupees, right? Which means if you have to address three lakh mothers every month act or more, right? You need thousands of, babies. India doesn't have that capital. So uh, government doesn't have that capital. There are students today who have, who are not able to study, right? And we are finding that digital divide is very powerful. So we are looking for a company not to deliver on the computer or on the cell phone. We're looking for a company who can deliver on television. So please understand our mind has changed. Television, there are 200 million families who have television in the country, but not a single education program runs on that. And I find enormous amount of discussion on digital divide and how education has to be delivered. But here we have infrastructure across the country. Nobody needs to buy computers. How can we deliver? Is there a company which we can look at, which can deliver television based education learning programs? Because then Today, 90% of the students are not able to study sitting at home. Please understand that, right? Absolutely. Is this a financial? Uh, this answer is yes. So I think our thinking has changed completely 
by looking for companies which are very different and solving enormous giant scaled problems which have not been solved before using technology. Build them into big brands in the country and then in fact take them global. So please understand, a company which is solving a problem in India, that problem can be taken outside the country. So half our companies are now global footprint. That's an amazing scale. Thanks, Sudhir. I'm going to actually bring Amit in now. So Amit, you know, obviously, you know, Sudhir said, which I thought was very interesting, is that by measuring, other than the financial returns, by looking at the impact that they were creating, not only did more money come in, not only were their investors happy, but their employees were also happy. Talk to us a little bit about what you're seeing in terms of the trends of impact measurement and how is that helping us drive more capital towards impact? Absolutely. Thank you. And, and thank you for those comments there. And, and I think, you know, a couple of things that I'd highlight, you know, we at the gin, we see impact measurement and management as fundamental to good impact investing. Um, and when I mean measurement and management, um, obviously measuring is gathering the data and understanding how you're doing, but management is incorporating that data into how you manage your funds and how you manage your companies. Um, and, and I think that's where, you know, data really informs decision-making. Um, we um, you know, provide resources to the market, and in, in, in particular, you know, I, we have offer a system called Iris Plus. It's I-R-I-S with a plus sign. It's a free online comprehensive system for measuring and managing your impact. Um, so you can start with a sustainable development goal or a specific thematic area. It could be gender equality. It could be clean and affordable energy. And identify the core metric sets backed up by evidence that you can use to measure your progress. Now, where I think this is really important, the trends we're seeing um, in the early days of the gym, um, when we were founded, um, it was a lot of kind of what I would call do-gooder organizations focused on measurements. Um, foundations, government-backed institutions, nonprofit investors, um, who are all doing really interesting work. Now, if you're talking to a mainstream asset manager or asset owner, um, they're asking um, you know, for you know, how we, they can better understand the impact that they're having. Um, this morning, I spoke to the head of investments for a 200 billion euro um, pension fund. Um, and the main topic um, on his mind was how do we measure impact and better understand the non-financial indicators of performance. And that, I think, is an incredibly powerful driver of interest. You know, if we have people controlling massive pools of capital who want to not only know how much profit their investments are making, but also understand the impact that they're having on people and the planet, um, that's um, what you'd hope people are using for decision making. And that, of course, um, is the type of thing that leads to what Sudir's experience where you know, they are, um, that is driving the way some investors are allocating capital. Um, this is a trend where this is becoming more and more prevalent across most of the mainstream asset managers we engage with. Um, so I think anyone you know, who's working on investing now should be paying attention to these trend lines because it's not just in the impact investing market but it's actually going much more mainstream now. I think we can see that. I mean, you know, Sudhi talked about how he is a, a mainstream VC, a VC investor who obviously was driven by financial returns and has seen the value of actually looking at uh, financial returns plus. So is that, Amit, where you're seeing the growth coming into uh, the impact investment community? Is it more mainstream investors like Sudhir and Chirate Capital that are coming into... Uh, uh, you know, what we would call the impact investment group? Yeah, we, we are seeing um, you know, growth across the board. So we, we see more philanthropic foundations becoming active in impact investing, uh, more H&Is um, who are, who are um, allocating capital towards impact investing. But increasingly, we're seeing more institutions where much of the world's capital sits. Um, one thing I think is important to highlight, too, in the moment we're in now, you know, where we're dealing with a global pandemic that's, you know, unprecedented in modern times, um, you know, I actually see on the on the horizon an even greater emphasis uh, on impact. Um, you know, coming down the line, um, as we turn the world's attention turns to how we drive a more sustainable recovery, um, because I think we've now seen a lot of the inequities in the world really highlighted by the COVID crisis. Um, so things we've always known that were there, but vast differences in how people are treated along the supply chain, the nature of you know the haves and have-nots, and how they experience a crisis like this healthcare access, safe work environments. Um, and I expect most investors will be much more attentive to the role their capital is playing in either helping to reduce inequality or helping to reinforce it. 
Um, and I think that will be a huge driver in interest and uh, an impact and impact measurements uh, throughout the investment landscape. No, absolutely, Amit. And I, I think, you know, COVID has had a lot of impact on, on very, th very many, many things, including, you know, possibly um, taking us further back from achieving the SDGs. And, you know, absolutely, as you said, uh, it is also creating more awareness about the impact that capital needs to and has to create. So here, I'm going to ask you, bring you in right now. When you and I were talking before, you know, you said something really interesting. And I'd love for you to share that with the, with the audience in terms of how COVID has impacted your investments? Because I think uh, that is that to me was an eye opener and the fact that you know, these investments seem to be uh, very robust despite uh, the challenges. So, so Sudhir, could you share a little bit of what you shared with me in terms of the impact COVID has had on your portfolio? Yes, uh, and a great point. And we were very pleasantly uh, surprised at the pace. So just to give you a feel, in the month of March, uh, we have about 55 active companies. The total annualized revenue of our companies and all technology driven uh, was about a billion dollars, 7,000 crores. In the month of, I'm sorry, behind me, there is Independence Day music being played. So I'm sorry, I can't uh, stop that. <laughs> and um, so effectively, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. So effectively, in the month of April, we found that that $1 billion of revenue had crashed to $350 million. And so, in fact, you know, we got together with the entrepreneurs and I must say that this is my fourth downturn, which I'm going through in my VC life. And I saw enormous maturity, agility. Entrepreneurs talked about new products, new uh, service models, new business models, new revenue models being pre-pwned, added, etc. In the month of May, this revenue went up to $650 million. In the month of June, it went to $770 million. And in July, we are back to a billion. Okay. Now, obviously, within those 55 companies, some are positive, some are negative. But what worked was very simple. Since offline was shut down in the omnichannel model, in consumer or in the B2B, uh, we found that we had to go digital. So live doctor consultations, fitness at home, uh, you know, delivery, and a cluster level rather than on consumer. So many changes were made that 16 of our companies actually grew faster than pre-COVID times and at a massive scale. So in fact, scale increased because of three things which we did. Di going digital, going online, and then some companies took more steps to go global. Today, eyewear is sold by Lenskart in US. Your fit is in, in, in putting fitness solutions for homes across the world, especially in the US. First try is addressing baby care and mother care needs in Middle East. Um, a small company, we took consumer companies outside the country because they were solving problems bigger outside the country while they were solving problems at a smaller scale. So the scale at which they came back was very surprising, pleasantly surprising. Now those growth patterns have come back faster. Okay, thanks, Sudeep. I'm gonna quickly go to Amit. One minute, Amit. What do you think needs is a is a trend that we need to make sure that continues so that uh, we we drive impact faster? Well, I think one of the most important things that um, Sudhir spoke to is making sure that we're thinking about um, how we incorporate impact data um, into how we make decisions. Um, because ultimately, you know, what you want as an investor is more information about the performance of your companies. Um, and, and what I think is absolutely critical is that we keep in mind that, you know, there's a purpose for money that's greater than just making more money. Um, and that is that, you know, any, every dollar invested out there is having an impact on things related to the environment and to social inequality and other issues. Um, and to have that consciousness front and center, but to back it up with hard data about performance that we can use to make better decisions. Thank you, Amit. And, you know, it's, it's almost, I have 30 seconds to go before we go to the flag hoisting and, you know, to celebrate India's 53rd Independence Day. I think I'd like to end with the message that capital has a higher purpose than profit. I think uh, throughout this 24 hours global nudge forum session, we are seeing uh, the highlight of purpose. And I think uh, the COVID pandemic has also shown us that purpose needs to come first. And I think from what Sudhir has said, purpose and profit don't have to be two separate things. They can go together quite, quite well. So thank you very much Sudhir and Amit for joining us. And I want to take this opportunity to wish everyone here a very happy Independence Day. And thank you very much to the Nudge Forum. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye.